All right, so in the spirit of getting the hang of this whole YouTube thing, because the last episode was not too great, I admit that, we're going to pump out another one. Today, I'm going to go over tools of the trade. Got a few things to go over here. So the first one is going to be the most important tool, tongs. Fingers do not belong in spider cages. You're going to get bit eventually. I have 10-inch tongs here that I use on an absolute daily basis when dealing with these animals. You never want to stick your fingers in there, even for your docile species, because they can have mood swings. I also have these little ones that I use for the little slings getting in there. Much finer tip. Um, I know medical forceps are out there, but I don't have a pair of those. If you have those, use those. Um, these work great for crushing heads, for picking out little mold, because those do tend to pop up every now and then. So not quite as important as the big ones, but still needed in my opinion if you're going to be keeping a few slings. Do note on tongs, if you're a fan of tong feeding, which I personally am not, but if you want to, make sure you get them that have been dipped in rubber. If you can't find them, you can buy a rubber dip at Home Depot. I believe it's called Plasti Dip. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and just make your own. A tarantula biting on the metal, not a good thing. I spoke about broken fangs last time. It's a bad thing, so while I don't recommend it, if you insist on it, make sure you get rubber dipped tongs. Another tool that is an absolute necessity is a syringe. I got this one at a local feed store. I think it's used for medication for horses. Uh, what is this? It is 60 milliliters. Fairly large, it's not all for one spider. I tend to fill it and go from cage to cage. But the point is, once again, keeping your fingers out of there. You can stick this through an air hole to fill uh, water dishes. Same thing to moisten substrate for your humid species and your uh, slings. I would recommend having a smaller one. Mine recently broke. recommend having a smaller one for the slings because this one tends to put out a little bit too much water and frankly they do get old like this. And I'm about to make a few people cringe with this next suggestion, but I actually do have a spray bottle in my possession for the spiders. Never use this to moisten substrate because it dries out too quickly. It freaks the spider out. They hate the wind and the mist. They don't like it. The only thing I use this for are for the slings, the little guys, to spray water on the sides and their webbing to drink. They are too small to have a water dish because the cages are too small, not because they drown. Um, this is about the only way that they can get water outside of eating. So yes, I do recommend a little spray bottle. Just use it properly. The next one is going to be much more optional, but little tiny toenail scissors. I use these to cut the prey for either injured tarantulas, very old tarantulas, or slings that need a little bit of help taking down their prey. Uh, if you cut off the heads of roaches, crickets, mealworms, they will continue to move for quite a while, giving them a chance to take it down, and then they will shortly die. As I said, I use it for slings, the tiniest ones that need help taking down live prey. I have a very old mature male that just cannot take down live prey anymore. And the ones that are more finicky eaters, like an A. avicularia, that aren't too good at hunting, quite frankly. This next one is one that I actually recently accidentally discovered, a drinking straw. See, most hobbyists use a typical paintbrush to kind of guide the tarantula where they want them to go, which is fine and dandy. The tarantula doesn't mind the feeling of the bristles, but I don't like those hard parts. I haven't had an incident myself, but I can see how that would become a problem. I don't want an injured spider. So I decided to start using a drinking straw. It's actually quite useful. You can turn it into that 90 degrees and kind of bump them in place. They don't seem to mind the feeling of it. If they turn and bite it, it's just plastic, not going to do anything to them, and works out pretty well. Now I know what you're thinking. This is not a very long straw. It's not going to give you much room between yourself and the spider, especially the ones that kick hair, which is why dowels exist. See, dowels are long wooden tube things that you can buy at Home Depot. Um, this is what I use for my adult female Theraphosa stare me. Uh, ooh, there's hair on it. Yeah, that's why I have this. Gives you a lot of room between you and the spider because number one, they can bite. And number two, some of them can kick hair and some of the hair is really nasty. I expect to be itching later from this. I really should have cleaned that off before filming this. Tarantula keeping can get expensive 
very quickly, especially with the cages, which is why you'll want one of these, a barbecue skewer. I recommend the ones that are more flat rather than a circle like what I have here. Not a fan of these, honestly. Um, put it on the stove, heat it up to red hot, and poke holes in plastic containers you find at Walmart, Target, the container store, what have you. You'll notice I have very few aquariums around here. They're almost all do-it-yourself projects, which I will make a video on later. But in the meantime, heat this up, poke holes, and you're good to go. A little bit of a disclaimer, be careful with the stove thing. I use one of those barbecue glove things to keep my hand nice and cool away from the fire. Do this under adult supervision if you are under 18. Please, don't hurt yourself. Moving right along, we have these. I believe these are, oh, it actually tells me, one ounce shot glasses? I'm not sure what they are, actually. I found them at a grocery store. Uh, it seems like every grocery store has these. They usually come with lids, but you won't be using those. Drinking for uh, water dishes. See, the water dishes get stagnant and slimy and gross very quickly. Don't waste your time cleaning them out. These things are dirt cheap. You get like a hundred of them for a few dollars. Pluck it out with your long tongs, throw it away, put in a new one with some fresh water. It's gonna save you a lot of time. We're gonna take a step back to the necessities again. A catch cup. If you have a tarantula cage open, have a catch cup within reach. Always, I don't care how docile your tarantula is, I have had an Acalcotus bolt on me, I've had a G. rosea bolt on me, have these nearby. Um, you'll notice mine is quite oversized because I usually have my tarantulas on the floor when I'm messing with them excessively. You can just drop it over and they're not going anywhere. This will catch any size spider that you're gonna have. The next one will depend on where you live. Myself, you know not to drink the tap water if you live here. It actually hurts your throat. If you'd like to see why, look up the Pepcon disaster. It's not a good look. So if I'm not going to drink the tap water, I'm sure not going to give it to my spiders, which is why distilled water. Um, not purified water, there is a difference there. Personally, I don't want any of the additives that we beneficially get going into my spiders. Calcium, chlorine, what have you. This is just straight water. It's about 75 cents a gallon. Just pick it up, it's pretty darn cheap. As many spiders as I have, a gallon lasts me about two weeks, give or take. All right, I'm on the last accessory now. Did I say it was the last one last time? This is the real last one. A red flashlight, uh, not a normal white light flashlight. See, tarantulas do not like bright light. They will bolt if you shine it in their face. That being said, I found this great stuff. It's actually called transparent wrapping paper. You'll find it all over the place during Christmas time, but I'm not sure where you would find it uh, elsewhere in the year. It's just clear plastic wrapping paper. It reminds me of cellophane. I got a few layers of the red. I think there's probably about five or six layers here. Took a rubber band and put it over there and it works like a charm. Only my most sensitive species can even see the light. H. maculata for one. This tool is absolutely needed if you actually want to see your spiders. You're gonna find that these are nocturnal animals. You're gonna to wanna to get up in the middle of the night, take a look at them. If you do that and shine a light, one of two things will happen. They will either freeze and act like a pet rock and not move at all, or just bolt straight into their hide so you miss everything. If you get this, they will go about their business most of the time. If you actually wanna see your spider do their spidery things, get one of these. And that's it for this episode. Hopefully it's a lot shorter than the last one. I'd like to limit between five and seven minutes. Uh, so we're gonna make this outro quick. Once again, check out Arachno Boards. It's a great community. My name is Oilers K. This has been Araniate, and I will see you next time.